everyone so welcome back to my channel so today we are doing a story time video if you can't tell by the title already um but before we get into the story time i do have some quick announcements that i want to make so the first announcement is that i am doing a series on my youtube channel that's going to be called uniquely black where i will be showcasing um mostly small black owned businesses but i may open up to do um like other small businesses like other people of color or just small businesses in general but primarily the series is going to be showcasing black owned businesses that i think need a, a lot more exposure that i think are very unique and just companies that i just want to try their products so it will be a series on my channel. Um, I'll be doing a lot of unboxing, try-ons, and things of that nature. So if you are a small business or Black-owned business, uh, to get featured on the series or potentially get featured on the series, give this video a thumbs up, comment your business down below, and you must be subscribed. Um, I would preferably like for people who make lip glosses not comment because i am a lip gloss business and so i don't want you taken away for from my clientele or my potential clientele because i do showcase or talk about my business somewhere in most of my videos i do also make beer care so i would also like for you not to comment down if you make beer care products primarily so I primarily make beer care and lip glosses or lip care in general. If you have other things in your business, like let's say you make body oils, body butters, and things of that nature, you can comment that, but just don't comment that you make lip care or beer care. That's all I ask, okay? Okay, so yeah, that is how you can get featured on my YouTube channel, potentially. I've done a couple of reviews. I've done a couple of unboxing. I am going to leave those in the playlist. Um, it just won't be titled Uniquely Black Series. But from here on forward, the titles for most of my um, reviews and try-ons, it will say Uniquely Black Series and whatever the company name will be. Cool? Cool. So that's the first announcement. The second announcement is my birthday is coming up. <laughs> I'll be 26. Now, I didn't do anything for my birthday last year because I did lose my godmother last year. And her funeral was actually on my birthday last year. So I didn't do a lot of celebrating last year for my birthday because it was more of celebrating her life and what she has done for me throughout my life. But this year, I'm cutting up. If you're not following me on Instagram, my name is always in this corner, I think. I'm always wrong but it's, i'm pretty sure it's in, it's in this it's in that corner so if you're not following me you should because i'm going to be dropping some fire birthday content on my birthday my birthday is february 10th which is nine days from me recording this video but hopefully i will have this video oh they're shoveling the snow <laughs> But hopefully this video will be up by tonight because I'm going to try to keep it short. I'm going to try to keep it cute. So, but yeah, I'll be having a lot of sales for my birthday month. Um, the first one starts on February 1st um, through the 9th. The second one will be on my birthday. And then it will just be other sales throughout February to celebrate Black History Month and all that good jazz. So... If you haven't checked out my website, my website is always linked down below in my link tree. And um, if you want to check out my business Instagram, it's in my link tree as well. This is my new gloss that I literally just made an hour ago. And her name is going to be The Temptress because that's kind of like my theme for <laughs> my birthday. It's like a temptress because my business name is Tinty Lips Cosmetics, so that's kind of like my theme this year. But this is what she look like. She's a she's giving off like mauvey color, fish 
and she has some glitter in her but the glitter payoffs didn't come out as I wanted and I didn't want to add too much glitter into it because I know some girls don't like a lot of glitter in their gloss so yeah she's going to be on the website tonight so yeah um anyways I think that's all the announcements I had to make the uniquely black series and birthday month sales I think that's it um i do i am looking for more ambassadors i believe i have the flyer on my business page so if you want to become an ambassador for my uh, my business you can check out the flyer and proceed with the um instructions that's on the flyer i think that's it so let's get into this story time so this is a time when i almost had a sugar daddy yes i almost had a sugar daddy I fumbled a huge bag, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, timeline. So this is when um I was working at Greyhound. Oh, did I mention that the sugar daddy was my boss? Boss. <laughs> but oh, uh, this is when I was working at Greyhound. Um me and my ex of three years, we were not together, but we were still actively fucking and trying to get back together, but it didn't work out. Um, so yeah, um, so this is like 2017, 2018 ish, yeah, so um. Let's get on with the story. So at Greyhound, I had two different titles. I was a ticket agent, which is the person who, you know, do all the tickets, the person that's out the counter, print off the tickets, bag tags, and things of that nature. And I, I was a shift lead. So a shift lead um, is basically someone who is like kind of in control, but not too much in control, but you know, have enough power to do stuff like I was that person to go to if my immediate supervisor or the terminal supervisor was not on duty. So um, the boss was not technically my boss because he worked on the driver's side. So I worked on customer service. He worked on the driver's side. So technically, I didn't have to listen to him, but technically I kind of did. So yeah. Um, what should we name him? We just don't call him Sugar Daddy because I don't feel like thinking of a name right now. So, um, Sugar Daddy was not always working at this station with me since I started. So I started working at Greyhound in 2015, um, right before my dad had passed away. So it was around that time. Um, I started working, I believe he started working there, um, I want to say late 2017 or early 2018. I can't really think of the timeline, but yeah, actually, you know what? I think, it, I think, yeah, it was like around early 2018 because I became a lead for Greyhound around like late to early April. Yeah, so it was, it was like around that time frame. So he, I believe he wasn't new to the company. He came from a different station to help out because at that time we were doing a lot of like management um is it replacements? I guess I can say that. Yeah, like we was like in the process of getting new management, um, getting a new terminal supervisor, getting new supervisors. Like it was a lot going on. So um, he came in to help out on the driver's side and, um, you know, try to get things in order with all the driver issues that we were having. So if you don't know anything about Greyhound or if you never traveled with Greyhound at all, um, Richmond is like the main hub 
of either going north, south, or west. So depending on how far you're going, like if you're going from New York to Florida, Florida to New York, DC to Texas, whatever the case may be, you're most likely going to be in the Richmond station. Um, depending if you're doing a layover, a transfer, whatever. We are the main hub. We're the main hub. So um, we get a lot of people traveling through our station, especially at night, because people are trying to, you know, leave where they're coming from to where they're going to at a certain time, typically in the morning or typically, you know, like in a two day time frame, but whatever. Um, so we were having a lot of driver issues where either um, drivers didn't even have enough time to travel, drivers weren't showing up to work, drivers were quitting. It was just a lot. And so he was coming in to help us, um, trying to make things a little bit more smoother. So, um, I don't like, y'all should know this about me by now, but I don't like listening to people and that's why I started my own business, but I don't like listening to people. I don't like people who are above me. Um, I just have to deal with it because, you know, I need a job until like my business like really take off. Um, and so like, like I said, I technically did not have to listen to him because he technically was not my supervisor. But because he was technically the only supervisor on duty, he used to always tell me what to do. And I used to hate it. And so, like, I was just, like, jokingly be like, you're not my boss. You can't tell me what to do. And I guess he thought that was cute because, like, he'd be low-key, like, flirting with me. And so, like, one night it was, like, super slow in the station and I think we didn't have no buses going out at the time. And so, like, he had came down from his little supervisor um, booth or whatever. And, like, we would conversate and he would get to know me a little bit better. And he was telling me about his life. Um, he told me that he had a daughter, like, a couple years older than me at the time. So, I think I was 22 at that time. He told me he had a daughter that was 28. So, you know, some men don't like to really tell their age. So, I'm thinking this man is like early 50s, mid 50s, but he didn't look it. Like, this man was fine. He, he was fine. He asked me if I had a boyfriend. I would tell him like, no, but I live with my ex and I had to like explain the whole situation. And he was like, oh, so you can pretty much, you know, go out and do what you want and I was like mm, yeah I can do what I want um I can do what I want because I'm single <laughs> and so like he was asking me like things I like to do and like what was there to do in Richmond and you know like I'm not like a tour guy or anything because like I really didn't know what was really out here because like me and my ex at the time really didn't do too much but I knew enough about what was in Richmond and so like I would tell him like all the things that he could do in Richmond in case you know his daughter comes in town and they want to do something and he hinted he was like oh well maybe you should show me around the city and i was just like mm, maybe you should show me around the city i mean i can show you around the city but you can drive you feel me um so i started to see like little changes of what he would do when he come to work so um if you rode the Greyhound before, you know, like, we have, like, a certain uniform policy that I did not obey by. <laughs> but we had to wear, like, uh, so for customer service, we had, like, the blue button-up shirts, depending on where you are in the country. I think, I think New York has, like, some other colors. I think they had, like, red or something. Nah, I think they did have blue. It was some other state that had, like, a weird-ass color. But anyway... Um, we would have like these um, blue, navy blue collar button up shirts. Um, supervisors will wear um, the white button up shirts. And terminal supervisors, they can come to work in anything because they're really not 
seen unless they need to be seen. So, like, he will always used to have his button-up shirt, you know, like, always button up to the top. And, you know, uh, one one night he had his um his shirt, like, you know, like, unbuttoned or whatever. And he had, like, a little chest hair. So, I like to call chest hair taco meat. And I was like, oh, you got a little taco meat going on there. Like... I like that. And he was like, oh, you like chest hair? And I was just like, a little bit. I like a little chest hair or whatever. And so, like, since I said that, every day he would come to work with his shirt on the end. And so, like, we would get a little bit more comfortable with each other, with getting to know each other. And, like, of course, at that time, I was of age to drink. So he would ask me, like, what was my favorite drink? And whoop, whoop, whoop. And I told him that my favorite drink at the time was Henny because Henny is bomb. And this is actually, I want to say this is approaching my birthday almost. Or if, if it wasn't my birthday, it was definitely Christmas. So um, he had brought me a little thing, not a little thing, but those little is it 10 milliliter bottles? I can't remember. But it was of the Black Henny. And I think I had mentioned to him that I've never had the Black Henny before at that time. And so uh, I had went on my break. And he coincidentally took his break. And he was like, uh, come to the parking lot with me. I got, some, I got something for you. And I was just like, you got something for me. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not thinking anything of it. But like you got something for me so he had he had a nice he had a nice car like he was low-key banking like i know driver supervisors don't really make a lot at greyhound for real but he had something else going on because he he had like a little nice little car and so um i went to his car and he was like um go take a shot of this and put it in your car but this is for you and I was like, oh, you ain't had to do all that. You ain't had to do all that. <laughs> and so uh, me and him took a shot. And I went to go put it in my car. And, like, we was just outside talking. <clears throat> at that time, I was, like, really heavy on vaping. I don't vape as much anymore. I, I really don't vape at all, for real. But I was outside vaping. And he was uh, smoking a cigar, I think. And, like, we was just talking about um like where I saw myself in the future because at I think at that time I was trying to get a higher position at Greyhound since we were like still in the process of getting new management so I was trying to become either like a customer service supervisor or I was trying to become a GPX supervisor uh, GPX is where people who like do all like the real big shipping stuff that goes underneath the bus so like boxes uh, car parts and all that stuff that we did at Greyhound and so like I was telling him how I wanted to move up and how I had a degree in entrepreneurship management and he was like okay that's cool that that should help you out and blah 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 and I was like yeah but they already turned me down once for the supervisor position because I think when I first applied I didn't have my degree yet and then the second time they didn't uh, take me because I didn't, I had lack of experience, but my interviews went well, but it was only because of lack of experience. And for the GPX position, I had that in the bag, you guys, I had that in the bag, but it was actually racial. Let's just say that it was actually racial um, why I didn't get that job. And if you want me to do a story time on that, because that what really made me like quit. I did a I did a story time video of why I quit Greyhound, but this but that was a second reason why. So if you want to hear that video, give that video give this video a thumbs up. So um and so like he was giving me pointers on like who I need to get in contact with and you know to get experience like he can you know like show me stuff on the driver's side because I knew stuff about the driver's side but I let my other lead partner do it because he was there longer than me. I was just mostly trying to focus on the customer experience part. 
So um, he was like, if you want to learn this and that, you know, I got you and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, okay, cool. Um, so a couple weeks go by and um, I came to work. Like I said, I don't wear uniforms. I, do, I did not wear a uniform at Greyhound to save my life. So um, I think I came with a crop top on. If it wasn't a crop top, it was um, a shirt, a navy shirt that um, like cut out my boobs, kind of, and my um, my chest piece, my heart tattoo was showing. And so he was like, "I didn't know you had a tattoo." Well, I mean, he knew about my, um, he knew about this one, and he knew about look at this. He knew about my rose, but he didn't know about. <clears throat> my chest tattoo and I was like yeah I have I think at that time five I have five tattoos and he didn't know I had my belly pierced because like I said it was a crop top it was a crop top because because he saw my belly piercing too and so like he was he was trying to like get information out of me he was trying to figure out what other piercings I had what my other tattoos I had all that like he was really he was really trying to get it out of me and I was just like, you know, I got five tattoos. Woo, woo, woo. I still had my nose piercing. I was telling him I had one, two, three, four. I had four piercings. Five. I had five piercings. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you know, that's cool. Like, I wasn't really into, like, tattoo stuff when I was younger. And I wish I would have, you know, really gotten into it and blah, blah, blah. And, um... I think that like kind of turned him on about it. I, I I think that turned him on a little bit because I had tattoos and piercings. I don't know why. But then um, he was just like, so how, what's that situation with my ex? And I was just like, oh, I don't think it's going to work out. I don't think we're getting back together. Um, and yeah. And so I was like, I don't know if we're going to be roommates or if I'm just going to like move out. So this is when... I was, this is like close to me, like quitting Greyhound. So this is like August of the next year. Uh, so 2019, nope, nine, 2018. So he started in 17 and yeah, anyway, August of 18, um almost like close to me quitting because I quit around homecoming which is October and so like he would ask me um like you know he was just trying to get information out of me on like my living situation basically and he was just like you know if you need anything if you need you know like a place to stay you know you can hit me up and woo 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 um, if you need like a bill paid for and stuff like that, you know, just let me know. I got you. And I was like, what I gotta do for all of this? Because ain't no man just gonna be paying some girl's bills for nothing. Some men are like that, but Mm -mm. I think he wanted something and so I was just like okay thank you you know I'll let you know if I need anything um and, and blase blase and so like this is when like he really started show out like he would try not to do it around like my co-workers but like he would do like a lot <laughs> a lot of slick shit um like he would try to like buy me lunch well technically not lunch because we worked at midnight so who would buy me like midnight snacks or whatever and like I think one time like he slipped me some money at work and like he was like really trying to impress me or whatever and you know I was feeling it but like I don't know like I mean he was a good person like he was sweet he was nice and like I said he was handsome but 
I think what really just turned me off about him is that he had, you know, like a daughter a couple years older than me. Like, I'm pretty sure I would have went through with like really going on dates and stuff with him. But he had a daughter, not a son. If it was a son, it would probably be a different situation. But he had a daughter a couple years older than me. And so I would try to like, you know, brush him off a little bit. Like tell him, you know, like, I think you're sweet. You're handsome as hell. I told him that. I was like, you are handsome as hell for an old man, but... I can't. I can't. And um, so like the week, the week that I quit was crazy because like he, he got mad at me because like I didn't give my two weeks notice. Like I literally quit on the spot. Like I said, go check out that video. I'll link it down below. But um, the week that I quit, we really, we really, really got closer um, then because like he was really teaching me a lot of stuff. But, like, um, it was a lot of stuff going on with Greyhound, too. Like, it was, like, a lot of BS going on. And so, like, my coworkers were leaving left or right. Like, it was getting crazy. And it was only because of management. It was really only because of management. And I think at that time, he was telling me that he was about to transfer to a different station. And I was just like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be here that much longer. Um... What did I call my terminal supervisor? Or did I call her by her name? But the terminal supervisor at the time, like, she was doing a lot of crazy shit. And so I was just like, yeah, she got like a couple more times with me before I even, before I either quit or I'm going to have to bop her little witch looking ass because, mm -mm. So the night that I quit, um... The night that I quit, um, he like, he asked me out on a date because I, I think the night that I quit, he knew for a fact that he was transferring and he was going to transfer like in a couple weeks. Um, and so he was just like, let me take you out. Like, I really want to like, you know, take you out and blase, blase. And I turned him down. I turned him down. And I was just like, yeah, no, like, I would really want to if, you know, like, you didn't have a daughter, like, a couple years older than me. But no, because, like, what, because, like, what if we really start feeling each other and, like, we fall in love and, like, what if we would have gotten married? Like, your daughter would have been having to answer to me because I'm her stepmom or whatever. And it just wouldn't feel right. It would feel weird to me. And so I was, and so I like, I was like expressing that to him. And he was like, yeah, I get it. I wouldn't want my daughter in that situation either. And so, um, I quit that night and I think me and him had talked like on and off a little bit right after I quit and right, right after he had transferred. And then I had got my number changed because I had a stalker and everything, so I lost his number. But, um, yeah, that was a time when I almost had a sugar daddy. Fumble the bag, you guys, fumble the bag. Because I know he's making a bag now because his position is different now, I think, too. But don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you had a sugar daddy experience, comment it down below so I can read it. Um, follow, follow me on all social media platforms. All my names are always down below. Check out the site for all my birthday deals. My goal is to hit 1K in profit for my birthday month. Please, please, please help me reach my goal. And I will catch you guys in my next video which will most likely be a uniquely black series video bye